Hello, this will be a video on how to clean your transmission solenoid screen filters. Now while this video will be focusing on the 2002 Acura TL Type S, this should generally apply to all vehicles because all vehicles have solenoids in which those all should have filters. Now my vehicle has two assemblies, I don't know if all vehicles do or if they have just one or even three, but mine is two. And as you can see, they are pretty pricey, about $250 per assembly, so please do be careful while working on this project. So let's just quickly take a closer look at them. This in particular one has only one filter. It's about the size of a dime. And uh, for me, this one was extremely clogged with a bunch of transmission gunk. And then the other one, this has small, uh, three smaller filters. Uh, the two outer ones, uh, those were already pretty clean, but the center one did have a little bit of junk in it. Uh, all in all though, the filters are extremely easy to clean. All you got to simply do is take an air gun to them and all the junk just comes out instantly. You don't need to take brake cleaner or anything to them. Just a simple air gun should do it perfectly fine. So um, the reason I'm making this video is because I couldn't really find a lot of information on it or a lot of videos. I'm sure there are other videos out there, but I felt I, another one would be necessary because uh, I was looking on the forums for ways to f what I can do to possibly fix my transmission and there was only one or maybe even two forum pages that came up with minimal information um, on how to clean these solenoid filters and I read that this could be a potential way to fix a transmission and for me it did work. I was having excessive slipping problems or sometimes it just wouldn't even go into gear. It would just kind of like get stuck in neutral. You could hit the gas, it would rev, but you just wouldn't be in gear and you wouldn't move. Or I would also have really aggressive upshifting, extremely aggressive downshifting. It was almost as if the car didn't know what to do. It would literally just go from like fifth to second gear and the tachometer would read over 5,000 RPMs. It was, it was really bad. But now after doing this, however, I've put on about 150 miles and I haven't had any problems. The check engine light hasn't come back on. All my shifting problems have gone away. It's almost as if it's brand new. And, by, and I do have 209,000 miles on my vehicle. So you can expect something like this to have happened, having these filters get clogged up over time. This is a generally easy project overall. It is just a matter of removing a couple parts like the battery and the air filter assembly and this one plate that's under my battery and then yeah it's just removing a couple screws and the assemblies just come right out and go right back in very easy project I'm sure the average person could do it and it, what makes it a lot easier is if you have the the right tools like a like a little universal swivel attachment you'll see it later but it makes it so it's easier to get in there at funky angles um so let's see what's next oh let's take a look at what this looks like on the transmission so if you're standing in front of the vehicle this is what your transmission would look like this would be the driver side this would be a passenger side so let's make that a little bigger I said bigger there we go so there we are there's the first one it's uh, located kind of on top of the transmission it's a little bit easier to get to than the bottom one which is right there in which that one also isn't really that hard to get to either. They are simply just held on by a couple screws. This one has four screws. And then this one has six screws. You can't really see them in this picture, but there are six of them. And they're all uh, really easy to get off. You just gotta pop them loose, and then from there you can remove them by hand. Um, yeah, that's all you really gotta do. It's just a couple screws and removing, uh, cleaning out the filters and putting everything back together. So why don't we get started? Okay, so first thing we're going to do is remove the air filter assembly. So simply loosen these two screws, 8mm. Disconnect this hose here, don't lose your clip. Disconnect this hose right here. And loosen this screw right here. It holds the tube to the engine or whatever. And then you can just pull it right out. Kind of. Well, yeah. Maneuver this tube around there. There we go. Now it's off. We'll just set that 
to the side. And while you're at it, you can check your air filter. Mine's getting kind of dirty. Still pretty decent though. Then we'll remove the battery. Next we'll remove the battery, we'll loosen up these two little securing screws to hold the battery in, and remove the terminals obviously, wherever it is in here, yeah. And then just lift it out. There we go. The battery is out. So just and then to remove the battery housing on your positive cable, there will be this little clip attached to it. You can just take like a like a pliers and just squeeze it, and it's attached to that little circle right there. You just yeah, pop it through, and then you can remove your housing and set that off to the side. So this is what we got so far. And here's where we need to get to. Okay, next what you want to do is remove this blue plate that was under the battery. There are seven bolts. There's one there, 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 and there. And then the last one is right here. All these are a 12 millimeter and that last one was a 10. Also you'll need to remove your coolant reservoir and you just need to pop this. Uh, this is the negative terminal cable. Pop that loose and remove your screw here. And it just comes right out. everything. There we go. Alright, next you'll need to remove what I mentioned earlier which was that gray clip. Uh, you'll, it's attached to here. You just kind of, oh I shouldn't even say that, but it, to a sense it kind of slides on. But it was really on there. So don't get frustrated. It, it took me a couple minutes to carefully get off. And then you can flip it around. There's a little clip here or a little button. And then you just pull the switches apart. Oop. But you need to remove that. So you can get to that bolt. That top bolt there on the, uh, above the red uh, cl uh, connector. So yeah, well, remove the... Um, these next, the red and the black one. Now you can kind of you can see it a lot better now. Red and black. Remove those. All right, yeah, we got our little connectors off for each. Pretty much the same thing. Each have their own little button, and then you just you just pull them off. And it looks like there are six screws. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, and that should be the last part, really. And the, hopefully it just comes right off. I, I would imagine it would. So we will do that next. Okay, and for removing those six bolts, I found this little combination to work. A little ratchet. These are 10 millimeters with uh, an extension. And it's like a, it's one of those universal things. So you can really get in there at a funky angle because yeah, this, this this thing, oops, this gets in the way. All these wires kind of get in the way. So if you don't have one of these, or it just kind of goes in a circle, it might be pretty hard. But if you do have one, it was really easy. They, the initial like pop for some of them was a little more difficult than others. But all things considered, it was easy, which then I was able to just remove it by hand. And also you can, uh, oops, sorry what I was going to say was, well, this metal piece here is like a little bracket. It holds, it just kind of secures the wire in which you can take your pliers, it's a little clip there, and you can push it through the bracket. 
to get this cord out of the way to make it easier to remove the screws. In which this is also attached to like right there. So yeah, don't lose that either. I'll just set that up here. And I don't know, I'm automatic I I'm kinda paranoid like that, but I like to keep my screws in the order of like how they're put in. So like these are the top one, second row, third row. And then I put them back in the same order, so I might recommend doing the same thing. Definitely nothing wrong with it. So yeah. Okay, and then we can remove it. It felt like it could just come right out. I just want to stop just in case. So here we go. All right. There was virtually no leak. So that's good. There we are. Focus. Yay. There we go. All right, and we'll see what we can do. There we got the solenoid off and in the garage. The first, man, the sun makes it really awkward. We're gonna take a look at this. So we're gonna pull this guy out. As you can see, if it'll focus, it's pretty dirty. So we're gonna clean that guy off. As well as, yeah, yeah, there's nothing in there, it's just a tube pretty much. There's no filter there. So yeah, clean that off and clean the inside and we'll get to the solenoid here in a second. Alright, we are in the garage. And here we are. Oh, I was expecting a little something different. Kind of like the filters, or the screen filters being bigger, but here they are. This one looks good. You can see right, see right through it. Not clogged at all, so that's good. And this other sided one, gasket doesn't want to come with it. This one's also good. But, this middle one, not so much. Pretty gunked up in there, who knows if that could be, oh no, it's not. It doesn't look terrible, you can still kind of see through it, but that could be restricting some flow, maybe causing some problems. It's very possible, so I'll, I'll clean that up. Yeah, so we'll stop it here. All right, that was really easy to clean. All I did was I just took my air hose gun and just simply sprayed right through it. And it was and it cleaned it right up. I figured while I'm at it, I'll just do all three. Here's the middle one now, the one that was dirty. There we go. Perfectly clean. No more gunk. Here are the other two. Perfectly clean, all three of them. Yay. All right, for the bottom one, it'll be pretty much the same deal. As you can already see, I have taken it off. Uh, it did, uh, I, don't know, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier or not, but I think I said it'll probably leak a little fluid because it's sideways, and it did, just a tiny bit. Um, but there's no need to like drain your transmission pan or anything like that. It's not gonna, it literally leak like a couple drips, so. And it was pretty much the same thing. Um, if you have this guy, the special end part where it can bend in like every direction, that makes it a lot easier. Because I don't know. Let's put it this way: if you don't have one, have fun. <laughs> but it, um, yeah, like the the top one there, it wasn't you know, really hard to pop the screws loose, and then after that. You could easily loosen them by hand. And actually, uh, there are four screws. Top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. And it just comes off just as easily as the first one did. So, yeah, let's go take a look at it.
Um, yeah, this gasket, make sure it comes with it. Mine stuck to like the actual car. So, as you, yeah, as you can see, uh, this filter here, why won't you focus? There we go. It is dirty. It is very dirty. So, I'm thinking because we are able to uh, clean those with the uh, air gun earlier, I'm going to try doing the same thing with this one. So, I'll pause it here. And, yeah. Yep, air gun did it perfectly fine. Look at that. Came right out instantly. It's amazing that just a little bit of gun could get inside there and cause problems. I don't know. I'll, we'll find out if that was a problem or not. But we'll also, I didn't test that one yet, but we'll also do an ohm test on this one as well. Ohm voltage and amp test in a minute. So now what we're going to do is an ohm test on each of the solenoids. We got about 5.5 on this one last time. There it is. Okay. And 5.5 again. We'll try this one. Five to five point five again, so they all are reading the same thing, so that's good. All right, after the ohm test, pretty much you can put everything back together. Put your gasket on there. Uh, get some transmission oil on both sides. Clean off all the surfaces on there and down there as well. And yeah, just reverse order process, and that's how you clean your transmission solenoid screen filters. Thanks for watching.